wide variety of glues on the market. Uh, and, you know, feel free to uh, use whatever glue that you prefer. Uh, I generally use a PVA glue, um, which is a polyvinyl acetate glue. It's sort of a plastic glue. Uh, Elmer's glue is considered a PVA glue. Uh, I use the Mod Podge um, matte. Uh, this works really good for me, and you can also use it as a protective finish for your work. Uh, and of course, this is a matte finish. They do make uh, also make another version that's that's a gloss or a luster finish. Um, it works the same way as a glue. Uh, now you could use this uh, Mod Podge as a protective finish also, and it would give you your work a glossy or shiny finish. So um, now. Another thing that you can use um, is this is a bookbinder's glue. It's a PVA, a neutral pH uh, glue, and uh, that means that it's archival, uh, that it doesn't yellow um, over over a period of years. So, um, I this is a fairly more expensive than the Mod Podge. Now, the Mod Podge, I'm not really sure if it's archival or not. I haven't heard anything. Uh, about it or read anything about it, but uh, for the most part, I've been using it for quite a few years, and it seems to uh, seems to be okay. Uh, now, another thing that a lot of people use is uh, Yes Paste. Now, this is acid-free also. Um, now, it's more of a paste than it is uh, a, a liquid-type glue. Now, you can add uh, water to this. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if I can. But, but it's more like a paste, and you can actually add water to that. Uh, this works really well, too. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people that, uh, that really prefer using the Yes Paste. Um, now, another thing that you could use, and, and this, is, uh, this is really good. Uh, it's not as messy, and it's, uh, it's just a glue stick. Um, this is a fairly large one, uh, and this works well if you want to keep the surface of... Um, your uh, collage nice and clean. Uh, so this is sort of, this is very similar to the Yes Paste. It's sort of a pasty uh, finish. Um, now they do make this in archival too, so, uh, but th that's that's a brief um, overview of some of the glues that you can use. Um, now another thing that we'll be using, um, you know, is tools to cut the paper and, and that out with. Um, you know, you want a, a, a few good pair of scissors. Uh, these are fish guards. They're, uh, they get a lot of use. Um, they have soft handles, so I really like those. Um, here's an, an old-fashioned pair. These are custom-made, uh, handmade. Uh, I've had these for some time, too, and uh, they work really well. There's some smaller scissors. And what... Um, I've got some really small scissors here that I use a lot. If you're cutting out, you know, detail work, uh, and, and that's these. Uh, they're very, very small. There's, a, there's one that has a, a curved blade if you're cutting out circular shapes, and that works well. And then uh, here's one, uh, another pair. So, and those are the scissors uh, that I typically use. Now, another thing that I use is razor knives. Um, these are really good for cutting straight edges. Um, and there's a wide variety of uh, the razor knives. Little small ones here. Um, here's one that looks like a pen, uh, minus the blade. But uh, this works really well if you're, if you're doing uh, really detailed work. Uh, it works fine. And... Uh, of course, the, the bigger version uh, of the razor knife. Uh, this works really well if you're cutting out, you know, heavier uh, material. If you're cutting out your substrate, um, this works well for that. And uh, I've got a few more here. And, of course, uh, it's just the utility knife. Uh, that works really well. It has a very sharp point. Um, it's good for uh, cutting around uh, corners and shapes. Uh, another thing that I've just recently started using is this rotary uh, blade, and it works really well. I think uh, a lot of people use this for 
uh, quilt making uh, if they're doing patterns and stuff. Uh, but it, it's really good if you want to cut something really quick uh, and of course a straight line. And uh, like I say, that works very well and you can get replacement blades uh, for this too. Uh, so that's, that's an overview of some of the uh, cutting tools. Now, of course, uh, since this is a uh, sort of a mixed media collage uh, workshop, we're doing a lot of mixed media work, uh, we're going to be using paint. Uh, just, you know, feel free to use, um, you know, whatever paint you have. Uh, here's some watercolor paints. I use those quite a bit. Um, I also use uh, acrylic paint. Now, you can buy your acrylic paint in the small tubes. Or, I'm sorry, small bottles that are already uh, pre-mixed. Uh, those work really good and they're quick. Uh, you can pretty much, they're already mixed up. Um, they make quick go of, uh, you know, if you're using uh, really Another thing that I use is gouache. I use a lot of gouache. Um, I, I like the um, matte surface of the gouache that it creates. Um, I also use the, the two watercolor paints, so, you know, feel free to use, uh, you know, any type of thing. Acrylic paint works fine. Uh, feel free to use that. Uh, here's another thing. Uh, these are uh, Aquil Neo Colors, um, and they're sort of like crayons, uh, but you can, you can actually draw with them, and uh, when you uh, get them wet, they're, they more act more like a... Uh, a watercolor so these work really well and I've used these for a number of years so uh, they're a little expensive but uh, you know you'll have these for many many years I think I've had these for probably 10 years so um, and that so uh, that's some of the uh, paints that we could be using um, I also want to talk about uh, some of the protective finishes um, that you can use. Um, now, you don't really necessarily have to have this for the workshop, but I, I just want to briefly uh, go over it if you uh, later on want to decide to get, uh, you know, this to use in your work. Is These are acrylic finishes. Um, uh, of course, these are made by Liquitex. Um, Golden makes them. Uh, a number of paint manufacturers also uh, produce these. Uh, this is a gloss medium and varnish. Now, uh, traditionally, this is used for acrylic paint. Uh, you could add this to your acrylic paint. And, of course, uh, in this case, the varnish or gloss medium would make the, the paint glossy or, or, or shiny. Uh, you can also, what I use this for is a protective finish. So if you want your work to have a glossy, protective finish, you would want to use the, uh, the gloss medium and varnish. Um, now, what I use for the most part on my work is a matte medium. Um, and this is a fairly large uh, can, uh, and it'll last you for quite some time. Um, I usually use this as a final coat on my work. Um, and it sort of protects, uh, you know, the finish of the paper. Uh, now you can also use this as a glue. It's it's fairly liquid. Uh, it works really well for a glue if you're using tissue paper or tracing paper, or any type of paper that's thin. Uh, it works really well for that. And th those are the two mediums that I use. Uh, there's also a link uh, on the Haiku Learning site that uh, briefly talks about the varnishes. Uh, now, a few other things that I use um, is, is sort of a protective finish. Now, this is a UV protectant. Uh, it text, protects against ultraviolet light. So, um, and after I coat my work with uh, the medium, uh, I'll spray this uh, on top of the uh, on top of the finished work, uh, and it, it just helps to uh, cut down on harmful uh, sunlight on the work, uh, which you know naturally will fade fade your work. So uh, this is really good to use. And they also make there's quite a different uh, companies that make quite a few different companies that make them. 
This is a gloss finish. Uh, works the same way as the medium. If you just wanted to put like a glossy finish on your work, you could spray this on there. Now, uh, another thing uh, that we're going to be using, these are just going to be just basic tools, your brushes. Uh, I'll briefly go over those and um, uh, just a, a wide variety of brushes. This is a, a larger glue brush uh, It works well. It's a bristle brush. Um, now, we have a variety of brushes. Um, here's a soft sable brush. It works good for watercolor. So, and it's always good to have a, a, a wide variety of different brushes. Uh, this one works good for glue. Um, like I say, um, you want to ch choose a brush that's uh, a, a good size for the work that you're, you know, that you're working on, or the size of, of work that you're working on. Uh, you wouldn't want a really tiny brush if you're working on a, you know, a bigger piece. Uh, so you'd want a little bit bigger brush. Uh, but those are some of the brushes. Um, uh, you, and of course you can use a foam brush too. This works really well for spreading out glue uh, paint. Uh, it does a, a good even job. Uh, we're also going to be using uh, just pencils. These are good for marking things. Uh, marking things to cut out and, and, and that. So now another thing that I use is bone folders. Uh, we don't really particularly need any for these classes, but if you, uh, you know, want to continue uh, working in collage, uh, these work really well to uh, fold things down uh, and that. So uh, they work really well to, uh, to make the the glue or the, the surface of the paper adhere to the substrate uh, and eliminates bubbles or wrinkling. Uh, now also use uh, a hand roller uh, which is used for printmaking. Uh, I don't I didn't bring one he over here but uh, it's just a regular hard uh, brayer. Uh, it's used for printmaking. You can find them for uh, seven or eight dollars. That works really well because it, it really will roll down the paper uh, distribute the glue uh, evenly on the back side of the paper. So that's uh, some of the just the, the other tools that we're using. Now, some the substrate that we're going to be using throughout this course is going to be watercolor paper. Uh, and you can find the watercolor paper in different size, um, you, you know, different size uh, pads, uh, 18 by 24, um, there's, I think, 17 by 19, uh, 11 by 18. Uh, I would get a bigger bigger pad and then just cut the size. Uh, we're not really going to be working uh, very large uh, in this course. Um, and then you can just cut the size that you want. This is 140-pound watercolor paper. So, And, and I find it works really well uh, for me. Now, if you're wanting to use something a little heavier or heavier material in your work, uh, I would recommend using sort of a mat board or a stiff cardboard. Uh, this is going to cause uh, less wrinkling or curling. Um, okay, another thing that that's required for the, this course is some sort of notebook. And I recommend getting a small notebook. Um, and if you can find one, uh, this one's maybe 4 by 6 And... Um, you know, you, you want to get a small one, and if you could find one with a spiral uh, ring on it, I would get that because that's going to be easier for you to scan uh, the work as you um, as you uh, do it in the book. So uh, this one lays fairly flat, so I could lay that down on a scanner um, and not have any problems uh, with it, or I could lay it flat if I wanted to take a, a photo of it uh, of the work. So. But I, I do recommend getting a smaller one. It's just going to be a little easier to work with. Um, I mean, here's another one. This one's five and a half by eight and a half. Um, it's gray paper, but um, I, I would, you know, typically stay with white and, you know, get a small notebook. This was, you know, three or four dollars, I think. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll be using one of these throughout the course. 